Welcome to my wedding planning video. I'm gonna be diving into everything that went into planning my wedding. So for those of you guys who do not know me, I'm Action Jacqueline. Normally I'm working out with you. I did just get married and it was a huge event. Thankfully, I had my sister who basically stepped in as my wedding planner. She's not a wedding planner. She's a pediatric dentist. She just loves doing this. And together we created the best wedding of my life. I'm so thankful for her and my entire family for supporting us. I watched so many wedding vlogs and I just found them so helpful and so that's what I want to give to you so in this video I'm going to be sharing all of the different highlights I wrote everything down plus your questions I want to start here at the beginning the amount of decisions that you have to make in a wedding is like insane there was two questions that I kept asking myself over and over again and it really helped me make decisions which is what did I want to feel like that next day and I would visualize myself the day after the wedding, really focused on wanting to feel happy. I wanted to feel like I had a blast. I wanted to feel relaxed and I wanted to feel present. I meditated on that feeling like every single day. And so that really helped calm me down, feeling like everything was already done. I would visualize myself like going through the wedding, calm and happy talking to people greeting people like what would people's faces look like like when i saw them when they saw me and then the second question was how do i want our guests to feel i wanted our guests to also feel connected to our love story this is why we decided to share our vows publicly there's nothing more beautiful or inspiring about a couple and why they fell in love and why they why they decided to spend the rest of their lives together like that's a big deal and we also believe in accountability when you make that public statement in front of everybody that's how you stay accountable that's what we do in my program heal my gut that's what we do in my app our definition you proclaim your commitments there's tons of studies that show that you are 10 times more likely to achieve those goals when you announce them publicly and you have a plan of action. So this was cool. So we didn't want them to just feel like they're at just any other wedding, just like going through the motions of it. Like we wanted them to feel like there was something unique and special about how they would walk away from the wedding. This is the thing that we did. Our friend shared this idea that she did at her wedding where she gave everybody a personalized dare card. At the table, they would go and sit down and they would pick up a dare written specifically for them. I felt like this was a really cool way of us being connected to our guests without us having to be like right there next to them. You know, I made a whole Excel spreadsheet of the dares for each person and we made it fun. Some people we had them tell a joke, like the funniest one I think was Josh's brother doing an arm wrestling match with somebody. His brother is like huge and like jacked. It's like no one wants to arm wrestle him. It was just so funny. And then we had other people just do things like specific things about them, like a funny voice that I knew they could do. Just like really personal touches. And it just like brought out a really cool feeling. Cause when we went around to say hi to everybody, they were all talking about the dares and like how fun it was. And it was just like such a cool experience. We even had some people do the wave. And then all of a sudden we see like a table like doing the wave and it was like so cool that was one of my favorite highlights was just like watching everybody doing their dares at their table another unique thing that we wanted to make sure that we did was make sure that the food didn't have any vegetable oils in it if you know me, I always say get vegetable oils out of your diet. It just inflames you, it makes you feel sick. So we wanted our guests to feel really good at the wedding. I mean, and it's really expensive. I wanted to make sure that they were eating food that was high quality and that was gonna make them feel good. So we talked with our caterer and we actually had to like pay extra to take out the canola oil and we use olive oil instead. We announced that. So Josh made this cool speech at the beginning of the wedding. One thing that we have prioritized in our life is our health and our nutrition. And some of you guys know we have a company called HealMyGut.com. And uh, we've brought a piece of that here tonight. So all of your uh, dinners and appetizers, everything um, we've had cooked in very nutritious olive oil as opposed to seed oils and canola oil. So you're not gonna feel sick after eating it. When we went around the tables, everyone was like so excited for their food. They're like, I've never been so excited to eat wedding food before. So that was also another layer that was like really, really cool. And then the same thing goes with the cake. I was almost not going to have a cake at all because I could only find canola oil based cake. I did not know that cakes were, are usually all oil based. I didn't wanna have a wedding cake at all because it's so expensive. I'm like, I'm not gonna spend money on something that I wouldn't ever eat or I don't even 
people think other people should be eating it. And so I was like adamant about not having a wedding cake. And my mom was like, how could you not have a wedding cake? You're not gonna have wedding cake photos. Like, what are you thinking? So I kept searching, kept searching. And thankfully I found a butter cake. This cake was delicious. The guy who gave us the cake tasting tour was amazing. He was like so funny. He was like, okay, what are we doing today? And we're like, cake tasting, of course, you know? And he goes, no, we are making memories. We like died laughing and we just like always bring up that story. We think it was so funny and so cute. I'm not a cake person. Like his life's mission is literally to get people to become cake people who were not cake people already. He accomplished his mission. I was just there the other day because that's now where we get all of our birthday cakes for our family because you can eat this cake and you do not feel sick. You do not get a bloated stomach. It's not like hyper palatable where you like overeat it, like you eat just enough. It is seriously amazing. It's perfect. They saved our wedding <laughs> because it was delicious and everybody loved the cake. Two other things that I wanted to have happen in our wedding that were really important to me was our first dance. And then the other thing was that we were by the beach. For me, being by the beach is everything. Like we live by the beach. I go to the beach every single day. Josh is the same way. It was just very special to us to be married underneath palm trees, to be by the ocean, to hear the ocean. We could even hear the train go by. It was a little foggy that day. When I was saying my vows, the sun actually came out, like literally at that moment for like just a few minutes while I was saying my vows and I could like feel the sun. It literally felt like God was shining on me saying that this is the perfect moment in your life. This is exactly your path. So I was like getting a little chilly and I could feel the sun and it like warmed me up. It was, it was miraculous. The whole scene up there of like seeing Josh and all his brothers and the priest and the beautiful arch that my florist did. And it was just this beautiful scene that I have in my head forever. And we had an incredible Catholic priest that gave us a Catholic wedding, which was amazing. We did the engaged encounter leading up to the wedding, which I loved because it asked us like all these questions and really helped us get to know each other. And we were like really on the same page about every question. And so that like just reaffirmed everything. Like I said, so the third thing was the first dance. Our first dance was intense like I wanted a full-blown first dance thank god Josh was so up for the challenge I mean he always loves challenges and he's very coordinated he played soccer his whole life and so he was up for learning how to dance like he has no dance experience at all I think he said he did some Greek dancing because he was Greek but like I mean that's it. So I'm like so impressed with everything that he did. Like this was quite the journey of getting there. And we practiced so, 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 so much. We started like two months before the wedding, which was not enough time because we were definitely like really jamming it in at the end. I should have given us like six months and we tried all these different lifts and everything. Yeah, it was so intense, but it was so much fun. Like it was a big project for Josh and I, and sometimes like I would get so like stressed and controlling and I was like a professional dancer. I'm like, no, professional dancers don't do it like this. And I just like definitely needed to take a chill pill sometimes, but <laughs> we got through it and Josh definitely rocked it. I told him, I was like, no one's gonna be impressed with me dancing. Like people already know that I can dance. Like I've been dancing my whole life, but you're gonna be the showstopper. People definitely were coming up to him being like, you stole the show, you were amazing, you were great, wow, you know? It was just like so fun. It was so special and unique to us because whenever anyone would ask me like, what do you want in your wedding? I would say, I wanna get married by the beach and I wanna have a big first dance and that's it. Those were like my two big, wants and that's exactly what happened. I'm gonna take it back a little bit and I wanna show you my mood board right here. As you can see like in my room and house, I wanted to feel natural. I love like all the neutral colors. I wanted to have that like boho feel. I was a little worried like, oh, is this overly trendy? But then I was like, no, this is what I want. Like I love this and it doesn't matter if I look back at it like 10, 20 years and it's like, oh my gosh, it was so like trendy at the time. But I think that's like what makes it fun. Like when you look at wedding photos and how maybe it was like a, a representation of the times because people are like, make sure you pick something classic. I think it's kind of fun to show what was going on at that time of your life. And then 
let's go into the venue. The venue that we ended up choosing was the very first venue that we ever saw. And it's funny, I actually saw it without Josh before we got engaged. To me, it just looked like a dream. And I was like, that is gorgeous. I'm gonna just like tuck that away in my head. So then when we got engaged, I was like, okay, well, let me just start looking at some other venues. So we proceeded to look at like 40 venues. Like it was insane, the amount of venues. I like to feel like I've ruled everything out and I've done my research and this is like how I do everything. At one point I was like, I told Josh, I was like, you don't need to come with me anymore. You know, I started to get into like a rhythm where I started to realize, okay, on Saturdays, like around 12 o'clock, most venues are open for, they're like setting up for a wedding because going and doing like the whole wedding appointment, it was like a full hour. Sometimes I would go to the appointment, I would look at it and I knew in a second that I didn't want it, but then you kind of have to like sit through the whole appointment. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna make any more appointments anymore. I'm just gonna like do speed dating with my venues. I don't know if it's like not allowed, but I'm like, I don't, whatever. I wanted to be most efficient with my time and it worked. So <laughs> highly recommend doing that. Finally, I was like, okay, this is the venue I want. And I was hesitant on this one because of COVID, there wasn't any Fridays or Saturdays available for all of 2022. So we ended up getting married on a Thursday. What's funny is before we decided and locked in this venue, we had another venue that we locked in. This has to do with my wedding dress. So I have a funny story to share. At first we had a golf course picked out that we were gonna do because they had a Saturday available it was beautiful it was definitely like my second choice but for some reason I just never really wanted to get married at a golf course so when I was going wedding dress shopping I was having the hardest time deciding on a wedding dress I did not like this experience because you could only go and pick like you know five dresses to try on and I'm like five dresses for a wedding I'm like I want to literally try on every single one like I want to try the ball gown I want to try the skinny one I want to try the mermaid I want to try the trumpet I want to try this strapless. I want to try the off the shoulder. I want to try the high neck. I want to try the lacy. I want to try the plain. I know definitely my bridezilla moment. I wanted to try like every single one on. And as you can see, like this is how I am in life. Like I like to try everything before I know that this is the one that I want. When they were like, you know, you make these appointments and it was like during COVID where they were like really strict about like walking around. Like you couldn't just walk around and like pick stuff off off the rack and be like, I want to try this. It was like, you have to stay in your seat. You can't walk around. I felt so restricted and I was making such a huge decision off of just like a couple dresses. So I had to keep making like more and more appointments to go back. It was just like really frustrating for me and for them because eventually I was like having this girl help me at this one place and she was super sweet, very knowledgeable. I came back because I was gonna try on my favorites, but then I tried on my favorites and they were definitely not my favorites anymore. And I was like, I don't know, I don't really like this dress, I'm not feeling it. So then I'm like, can I try this one? Can I try that one? So then we're like, you know, 10 dresses in and I could tell she was like getting really frustrated. Finally, she was like, you know what? You can try, cause she kept, oh, throughout the appointment, she kept saying like, visualize yourself at your venue. You know, see yourself walking down the aisle there. And then finally she said to me, she was, you know what? You can try on dresses until you're blue in the face, but at some point you're gonna have to have some discipline and just pick one already. And I was like, what? I was shocked. I can't believe this girl is saying this to me. Does she know who I am? I'm like the most disciplined person I know. My whole life and career is based on discipline and waking up and having your morning routine and being disciplined with your workouts and everything. So it was just like this like moment of shock. I didn't know what I said to her in response because I was just so blown away. <laughs> Anyways, Needless to say, I did not pick a dress that day. <laughs> but then, you know, I kept thinking about it like all night. I was like, why can't I make a decision? Why can't I make a decision? Why can't I pick one, you know? And so I kept thinking about it and I kept trying to picture myself in those top dresses in the venue. It like finally like dawned on me that I was like, oh, it's because I don't like this venue. Because I was trying to pick like a dress that would fit into like the golf course and like ballroom look. And I realized I'm like, I don't want that. Like I never didn't want to get married at a golf course. And I was letting just like the whole thing about trying to get married on a Saturday be the priority. And then I realized I was like, screw it. I'm not gonna get married on a Saturday. I'm just gonna get married on a Thursday. I'm, 
I want to get married by the beach. As soon as that happened, it was like everything clicked, you know, because I was like, oh, I know exactly what dress I would wear if I got married there instead. I know what my colors would be. And so that's like when I knew that that decision on the venue was right. And then I ended up getting the dress at the Grace Loves Lace and it just felt perfect. I was like, yes, this is my dress. Like this is the venue. Even though that girl's comment was so shocking, she actually really helped me catapult me into figuring out why I couldn't make a decision. So if you are watching, <laughs> then thank you for kind of like giving me some tough love there. And then immediately I went into the bridesmaids dresses. I worked with Birdie Gray and they were amazing. And we got to go into the showroom, which was super fun. For some reason, that's when it all started to hit me. I started to cry because they gave me my first bride robe. I don't know why that made me cry. Nothing else. Wedding dress shopping, I did not cry. For some reason, the bride robe made me cry. I have no idea why. I think because it said bride or like you always, I don't know. It just like, I thought it was so cute and it just like really hit me. I got the robes from them. I got slippers from them. And then if you watch my bachelorette video, which I highly recommend that you go watch it. I had all their goodie bags from them. They have incredible stuff for bachelorette parties. I ended up getting the satin one. It just had a more elevated look. Some of the girls needed exchanges. They were super easy to deal with and it was amazing. And then their sister company is the suit shop. Highly recommend the suit shop. They were incredible. Anytime we would call, like they would walk us through everything that we needed to know. They had a whole checklist for us to make sure that all the guys had exactly what they needed. Josh ended up doing a tux. We went back and forth on like the tan or the tux and I'm so glad we did the tux. It just looks so classy. So all the guys had one too and then my dad got it. I thought all of the formal wear that we had was perfect. And then Josh ended up getting his tan suit for the rehearsal dinner from them as well. And they have a nice like slim fit for like young guys. And Josh, what he did is, which was really cute, is he gave custom little cufflinks to the guys. Like my brother-in-law is really into Bitcoin. So he gave him like little Bitcoin stuff. And then my dad's into fishing. So he gave like a little fishing reel. It was like a super cute gift. And then for the girls, I gave them the robes, the slippers. I gave them a special perfume. So we had like a special wedding scent. We made sure we sprayed it before we walked out. So you could smell it as we walked down the aisle. Also, we got jewelry from Cosenzi. They have beautiful jewelry like this pearl and gold bracelet I gave the girls, this really pretty ring. And then these were the earrings that all the girls got. And so as far as the tablescape goes, first of all, I had the most amazing florist. People could not stop talking about that arch. She just did such a great job. And she did the baskets along the aisle, which I love. And I'm so thankful for her. And then we got to put the arch up at the top and I got that big sign, the Campbells. And that really added so so much. So it was like really glowing behind us. The whole scene up there, it was just gorgeous. We love palm trees. This was like my first choice. I went and looked at every single invitation there was, and then I still ended up back here. If there's any takeaways, I should just go with my gut instinct, right? It's like the first one. Let's make a little mental note. And then we put a nice little photo on the back with all the info. I put a nice little vellum around it. Got on Etsy. This was a silk rib. And then I got these on Etsy as well with, with our J and J. And then it had this like really cute little insert. I wanted them to like, open it and have that like opening experience. I made these little satchels. Life is salty, love is sweet. Inside we put our favorite little salt shakers. The salt just tastes so good. I thought it was such a cute little party favor. Okay, so I wanna show you our bar menu. We each had a signature drink. I had the Jacqueline Margarita because I love margaritas. It was so good, like so good. We had the party boy Josh, which is kind of a joke because Josh is not a party boy at all. Love all the little personal touches. One thing too that I thought was really personal was our table numbers. So every single one has our age. So people really loved these and like they were going around to all the tables to like look at all of them. And then for our guest book, what we ended up doing was a big surfboard. So I ended up painting it and this is the guest book slash photo book. So when people were coming in, they signed it and then they took photos at the photo booth and they posted it on there. And this is just such a cool item for us to have and get to keep from the wedding. This is the little sign that we made that says, strike a post, snap a photo, stick it on our surfboard, leave us some love. So I thought these were so cute. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this now, but oh well. And this was our menu that we had. It was on this like really beautiful shiny paper and I wanted it to be long so that it could stick in the napkin. I designed this myself. It took us forever, like forever. We didn't do programs at the actual wedding. We did more of like a program at dinner, just letting people know what's going up for the night because we did do a late night spot across the street, which was super fun. And we had an ice cream cart come, which I'm so sad. 
I never got any ice cream, which is like one of my biggest regrets. We were just so busy like talking to everybody. We were doing our first dance and I was changing and all that stuff and wanting to get into the photo booth. So I never got the ice cream. I remember I turned around all of a sudden and it was like wheeling away and I was like, no, like I missed the ice cream cart. I was like so sad. One thing that people asked were, was there something that you wish that you didn't spend money on that you did? And Honestly, no. I feel like everything that we did was so intentional. We got lounge furniture, which I wasn't sure if that was necessary because that was like $1,500. But that ended up being used the entire night. Like people definitely needed those extra seats. So that was the only one that I was like not sure about. And everything else, like I would 100% get again. People kept asking, did anything go wrong? And so I wish actually we took photos of this, but we never did. Is one thing is that my wedding dress got incredibly muddy like full on the entire train was like black with mud we took photos before the wedding and that was something that I really wanted to have was to make sure we had extra time for photos and I stepped through all this mud and I didn't even know it my mom and my mother-in-law now came to the rescue and we had to like hand wash everything out by hand and like just like hand soap I'm like thinking I was like okay great my wedding dress is going to be just like full of mud for the ceremony like I didn't know what else to do but we sat there and we scrubbed the entire like train and everything thank god for the both of them i walked around like the entire night with a, my dress being fully wet and i forgot to mention that during the ceremony that's why i was so cold during the ceremony and like when the sun shined through during the vows it was like amazing because the bottom half of my dress was wet because we didn't have time to dry it or anything and so we just had to make sure at least we got the mud out which it like pretty much came out and then it was just wet and I was like, whatever, it is what it is. Some of the highlights I always get asked is like, definitely the first dance was incredible. It was just such a great experience, like to see everybody's faces. At one point when we threw the skirt, it landed on my friend's face and she was just like, went crazy. It was so fun. Um, definitely doing our vows in front of everybody was so incredible watching my nieces come up it was like such a highlight at one point my little niece she's two she just like dumped all the flowers out of course it was just so funny and so cute hi everybody my name is Juliet and my name is Noel and we will be reading the prayer on a special day we will begin in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Noel will start us off Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, the first dance with my dad was really special. He and I practiced a lot on that too. And he, we, I made a video for him because I choreographed that one and he practiced that with my mom so much. And that was like so fun to do. And how many guests did we have? We kept it smaller and we ended up having 96 guests, which is crazy that we actually invited close to like 160. I did not want a huge wedding. I wanted to keep it smaller and it felt intimate. It was the perfect number. Lots of questions on my second dress, which I loved almost as much as my wedding dress. It was so cute. I wish I could just wear that dress all the time. I love that it looked like a little ballerina and it just was so cute. So I'll make sure to link that there. And the shoes, which you will not believe, I actually got those on Amazon, I know. I ordered so many shoes. I probably ordered like 12 shoes to finally get this pair. So I did all the research for you guys. Obviously this theme is that I do a lot of research and I go through a lot to get to the final decision. So these were like the best shoes that I could find. And lots of questions on my dance outfit. And what's so funny about this is that I ordered so many dresses and then I kept being like, Oh, I can't find a dress I told Josh and he literally went on Amazon and in two seconds found this dress and I was like wait how did you find this dress I've been looking for a dress that has like a good support on top that I'm not worried when I'm dancing that still has like flowiness has some sparkle and some shine and some and it's short not long like I couldn't believe he found it and like I'm like wait that is literally the dress I've been looking for and I was like okay well let's order it let's see if it fits it fit perfect I didn't even need to take it in like it was like the perfect dress. I, I was like, how did you do this? Literally five seconds he found it. And I spent 
hours. Thank you, Josh, for finding that dress for me. And then these were the dancing shoes. These are actual ballroom dancing shoes. I love these shoes. They were so comfy. Sparkle, they had the pearls. They were like so bridal. At first, like I was not into like all this bridal stuff. And then I started to really get into all the bridal stuff. And I was like, this is so fun. And lots of questions on my rehearsal dress. Got the big bow on Etsy. And then I got the dress on Lulu's. And so I put this whole thing together and loved the way that this looked. The girl who did my wedding hair, she did my rehearsal dinner hair too. And she did like the big ponytail. And I just, I loved the ponytail. It was so fun. People asked what our last song was. And it was Shout. And it ended up being so fun. It was so fun. Everyone, you know, at Shout when it gets like quieter and quieter and everyone like gets down to the floor and like was like crouching down. We used to do this at USC too all the time. And so it was so fun to do it at the wedding. And so everyone like got down and, and then at, by the end, people were like literally like jumping. Everyone was like sweating. I was so happy to see my friends like so sweaty. I was like, yes, that's how I know that it was like a really good dance party. <laughs> Okay, and that concludes all of the wedding details. I am so happy that you watched this all the way through. If I could give any advice to new brides, I would say enjoy this time. Try not to stress. Know that it is a really big day, but it isn't everything. Know that if you listen to your gut and you do exactly what you want, that you're gonna be so happy and that you have the whole rest of your life to also enjoy and look forward to things. People kept asking me if I was sad after the wedding that it's over, that I have nothing to look forward to, and I was like, absolutely not. Like, we have our whole lives to look forward to. And yes, this was a huge highlight of my life, and I loved it, and it was absolutely perfect, but it wasn't everything of my life, if that makes sense. And it was truly special. I think just stay focused on what's important to you. Write out a list of what's truly, truly important to you, like, for me, it was the vows, the first dance, and getting married by the beach, and then everything after that, it really does fall into place. Practice those meditations. I think it'll really help. For me, it really helped also to get rid of any sort of nerves of public speaking. There's a lot of public speaking out there. I prepared all of my toasts ahead of time because I like being prepared. And definitely comment down below. Let me know what part of this video was helpful and if there's anything else that you want to know from me. I love, love sharing all of my ideas and tips and everything. And if you are a bride, definitely check out the Bridal Bar Bootcamp. It is 30 days to get you in wedding shape. I loved putting that together. I literally put it together a month before the wedding because it was the workouts that I was doing for my wedding. And people say that it's one of their most favorite workout series I've ever done. So whether you're a bride or just wanting to fit into your clothes again and feel your absolute best, then definitely do this Bridal Bar Bootcamp. All right, guys, make sure that you go watch our wedding video if you haven't yet. Love you so much, and I'll see you in your next workout. Bye.